welcome back to another breakdown. Eric here. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Eric and I'm on a mission to help make sure that this MCAS is easy as possible for you guys because I know what it's like to be pre-med. You got a lot going on. You know, everyone makes out the MCAT to be like this hard, impossible beast that you have to conquer and it's really not that hard. Okay, it's really not. I don't want to see you guys stressing about this exam. Okay, it's actually way easier than you think when you do the right things. All right, so I'm going to break this down. We have a short passage here. It shouldn't take too long. Um, do, the pass on, do the passage on your own first and answer the questions on your own first and then see, you know, where you went wrong and where you went right. Okay, so this is the first question. All right, write down your answer. Pause it if you need to. This is question six. Pause it if you need to. Question seven, pause it if you need to. Question eight, pause it if you need to. And question nine, pause it if you need to. When you're done, resume this video. I will be breaking it down right now. One common medical tool is the stethoscope, often used to listen to sounds made inside the body. Most stethoscopes consist of a two-sided chest piece, a hollow tube, and earpieces. I'm highlighting what sticks out at me. All right, what's sticking out at me is this thing here is a hollow tube and it has ear pierces. Okay, the chest piece usually has a diaphragm and a bell, the latter for transmitting low frequency sounds. Okay, so bell, low frequency, and the former for high frequency. Diaphragm, high frequency. Okay, so I would write that down as a note real quick. All right, so I'm gonna write down in my notebook here, diaphragm <coughs> equals diaphragm equals 80 to 200 high frequency and then bell equals 20 to 80 low frequency okay i'm writing that down in my notebook quick very very quick all right nothing we don't want to, when we take notes okay we want to be quick simple blank equals blank all right when the listener wishes to hear sounds of a given frequency range he or she presses the appropriate side of the chest piece to the part of the body that is creating the sound okay nothing to highlight here obvious Traditional acoustic stethoscopes produce only low levels of sound in the ear pieces. As a result, many current stethoscopes are now electronic rather than acoustic. They use electronic technology to amplify all the sound picked up by the stethoscope. Okay, so electronic, they amplify. <coughs> My bad. Well, it didn't highlight. Okay, so electronic, they amplify. All right. Such stethoscopes allow quiet sounds of the body to be heard more clearly than otherwise would be possible. Many medically relevant sounds in the body can be detected by a doctor with a stethoscope. For example, the bell side of the stethoscope can allow a doctor to listen for heart murmurs caused by abnormally turbulent blood flow that creates audible vibrations in the heart or arteries. All right, so I'm highlighting the bell side is for heart murmurs and remember that the bell okay the bell was for low frequency sounds all right also using the diaphragm side of a stethoscope to listen to breathing can allow a doctor to detect crackling or popping in the lungs which can be caused by fluid in the lungs and maybe an indicator of pneumonia all right so the diaphragm which is the higher frequency can detect crackling in the lungs cool what is the highest period of a sound wave that can be detected well by the diaphragm on a stethoscope? All right, period, period, okay. <clears throat> period we know is equal to one over frequency. Okay, we know that. So if we're looking at the, uh, what is it, the bell? Or, the, or if we're looking at the diaphragm here. So the diaphragm is for high frequency 80 to 100. So which frequency would produce a higher period 1 over 80 or 1 over 200 all right the 1 over 80 would produce a higher period than 1 over 200 i'm sure you can kind of see that okay 80 is a smaller number than 200 frequency is on the denominator so you'd want the lower number on the denominator to produce the higher period okay so i'm going to do 1 over 80 and 1 over 8 I know is 0.125, okay? And if I have 1 over 80, then that's 0 0.0125. Very simple. Answer is B. Why would a doctor use the bell to detect heart murmurs but the diaphragm to detect pneumonia? Again, the bell, 
Okay, the bell detects the low frequency and the diaphragm detects the high frequency. Okay. Artery vibration is usually much quieter than breathing abnormalities. And the bell helps detect the lower energy sounds. Okay. The bell is for the lower frequency, so it's the lower energy. Is artery vibration is usually much quieter than breathing abnormalities. Okay, I like A. Let's keep going. Artery vibration is usually much louder than breathing abnormalities, and the diaphragm helps detect the lower energy sounds. The diaphragm, okay, helps detect the higher energy frequency sounds. So B is wrong. <clears throat> okay. Turbulent blood flow usually creates low frequency sounds, but crackling in the lungs is usually high frequency. Yeah, that's proven in the passage. Okay, the passage said that. All right, that's why we need the diaphragm to detect the crackling. Turbulent blood flow usually creates high frequency sounds, but crackling in the lungs is usually low frequency. No, crackling in the lungs is usually a higher frequency. So this is wrong. They told us it, okay? The bell, which was the higher, which I'm sorry, the lower frequency was used to detect heart murmurs. Now it's either A or C. They both seem kind of right here. Hmm. Huh. I'm going to go with C here. Okay, because it's more proven in the passage. They talk more about the turbulent blood flow creating low frequency sounds, but cracking the lungs is usually high frequency size. This is more evident that's in the passage. So I'm going to go with C. All right. Let's also read this again. Artery vibration is usually much quieter than breathing abnormalities. Okay. And the bell helps detect the lower energy sounds. Now, this is more evidently proven in the passage. They talk about this more, so I'm going to go with C. That's how you decide between two answer choices, okay? If I represents the intensity of the sound wave from an earpiece, A represents the area of the eardrum to which the sound is delivered, and T represents the time spent listening to the sound, which of the following expression gives the energy received by the eardrum? This is easy, okay? You have a fraction here, all right? You want the... I to be on the numerator because the more intensity, the more energy the ear will receive. And you also want the T to be on the numerator because the more time is spent, you know, getting hit by the energy of the sound wave, the more energy you're going to receive. Makes sense. So the only one with I and T on the numerator is B. Okay. You would not have I in the bottom. So you would not have T in the bottom, and you would not have I and T in the bottom. Okay, so the answer for that is B. Really simple, guys. The MCAT is easy. Who said the MCAT's hard? They're lying to you. Okay. Some headpieces also employ noise reduction technology to eliminate sounds not coming from the ear pierces of the stethoscope. How might such technology work? Okay, this is in your content review, but if you don't, Remember this from your content review, you can maybe get this right, okay? From my content review, I remember that in order to cancel sound waves, you're going to have to employ some constructive interference, okay? You're going to want to add energy at a phase. All right. Actually, no, not constructive interference, my bad, deconstructive interference, because deconstructive interference will you know, break those sound waves. They'll make it flat. And if it's flat, you're not going to have noise. Okay. So that's how it works. So moving parts in the ear pierces dampen noise, not coming from the ear. No, it's not the Doppler effect at all. Okay. Doppler effect is when you're traveling and as you're traveling, let's say a car is passing by you and it's a loud frequency, you know, very high frequency, loud car. As that car you know, drives past you and goes very far away, you're going to perceive a lower frequency sound. That's the Doppler effect. The ear pieces that cover the ears are made out of material in which sound travels at a very different speed.
speed, thereby shifting the frequency out of the range that humans can hear. Okay, you would need to shift that frequency very, very, by a huge amount in order to do that that we can't hear. So this is wrong. This is not it. The noise reduction system in the ear pierces constructively interferes with the sound from outside. Again, it's not constructive interference. It's more deconstructive interference. So this is D. The answer is D. Okay, look. Yeah, out of phase. I already saw that, so it's D. Okay. Number nine. Which of the following presents a difficulty for electronic stethoscope use? The amplification system may enhance the intensity of ambient sounds near the system that are not of medical interest. That could be it. Yeah, because what we know from the passage is that it just amplifies the volume. That's it. So this can be it. Low resistance in the wires connecting the chest piece to the ear pierces is needed for high sound fidelity, but may cause currents to reach dangerously high levels, increasing the risk of electric shock for the listener. Okay, I don't even think that they would allow electronic stethoscopes if they can potentially do an electric shock for the listener. So this is wrong. Low frequency sounds from the bell require more amplification to be audible. And electronic amplification increases as a function of frequency. No, the amplification, if you want it to be louder, that would be due to the amplitude. Okay, the higher amplitude, the louder the volume. Okay, that's what that means. Right, not necessarily, doesn't necessarily increase the function of frequency. And this is not, I can't make that um, conclusion from the passage information they gave us. They gave us so little information, so C is wrong. Standing waves in the tube part of the stethoscope can destructively interfere with the electro signal, reducing sound volume. No, they told us that it was to amplify. <laughs> okay, they didn't. They said it was to amplify the volume, not to reduce volume. Okay, so process elimination. Answer is A. All right. And we're going to go check right now to see if we got everything correct. So what do we start off? We start off with 5 to 9. Here is 5. We got B for 5. That was correct. Oh, here's the explanation if you guys want to read it. All right. Here is 6. Here's the explanation if you guys want to read it. <coughs> here is 7. Here's the explanation if you guys want to read it. Okay. Here's eight. Here's the explanation if you guys want to read it. And here's nine. And here's the explanation if you guys would like to hear it. We got all of them right. That's how you do it. That's how you get it all right. And I'll see you guys in the next video.